The following game has been rated M for Mature by the ESRB for blood, mild sexual themes, mild violence, and strong language. What that means is anyone under the age of 17, basically anyone still considered a child, should not be watching this video. You have been warned. Greetings and salutations. I am Outlier, and I bid you welcome to this channel. Joining me today are my co-hosts, as usual, Snowball and Wolf. And today we will be playing Frostpunk. It is a game that I've played before. Yes, like so many of the videos that I've made so far, they've been games that I've played before. It's so that way I know what's in them and I know how to play them. Because I'm fairly certain people that are watching this don't want to see me go through a tutorial. We good? Where was it? Oh yes, Frostpunk. Uh, didn't get that far into it. Yeah, I played it, stopped playing it, went and did something else. Never got back to it, kept meaning to, but well, never did. Until today. So, that being said, I've Wolf do her thing. Thank you. And let us begin. So, let's begin with a new home. I believe that's the starting scenario. So, basic premise of the game is that the ice age is a new ice age has happened, and basically the world is dying. And the only way to save what's left of humanity is to go and find We're things. The still cold world, no horizon in sight. Rulers of old, stripped of pride and glory. It feels as yesterday we were turning the wheels of progress. Until the frost stopped it all. Suddenly, without a warning. When tides had changed, they changed for all of us. No matter wealth or class, we have lost our world to snow. And with it, our last traces of humanity. Farewell to plenty, and for those who remained, came the time to adapt. We decided to leave our homes and head north. We roamed for weeks, maybe months, leaving behind all the things we once believed had made us. It was hope. Pushed us forward. Slowly. Step by step. We knew the cost of our journey. And we paid the price. A 
hundred times. Finally, the time has come to build the last city on Earth. So yeah, as I was saying, the Ice Age is set in and the only way to keep humanity alive is to travel north to um, the last coal-fired generator, which will provide enough heat to, while well, keep people not comfortable, it will keep them alive. And in a post-apocalyptic post scenario, staying alive is probably the best you can hope for. Why did they go north? I wondered that myself, but I believe in one of the uh, lore tool tips that happens during the load screen. Uh, from my understanding, the coal that is used to fire the generator, well, to keep the generator running, is in the north. So they have to go where the resources are. I'm inclined to agree. They probably should have gone south, but uh, from the way they wrote the lore, something tells me the south is just as much an ice ball. It's a snowball earth scenario. Don't know what that is? Ask a geologist. Anyway, a new home. We fled Lon from London and crossed the sea to reach the frozen north. On the way, our convoy was hit by a blizzard and scattered. A handful of us, a handful of us managed to reach the site of this generator, only to find it frozen and abandoned. Why is no one here? Did any of our people survive the blizzard? Are there any others out there? Whatever we do, we should expect the worst now that the world as we know it has crumbled. We have to survive. So, this is home, for lack of any term. But the cold, we need to get the generator working. It provides heat and power to other buildings. Without it, we freeze to death. Let's pile some coal and start the generator. So, as we were saying, this is the generator. This is the sole source of our survival. It dies or runs out of uh, power, we, all, we go with it. So there's various resources scattering around, there's basically three resources, four resources you need to worry about initially. F um, coal, wood, metal, and food. You don't really need metal all that much right now. That looks like we got four coal mine, four coal deposits. Start collecting there and there. Also, we need housing for 80 people. We gotta start collecting wood. More metal. last five remaining people can start collecting this metal here. So we have 100 raw food and no rations. We also have one steam cores, 10 steel, uh, 43, well now 45 wood, and 63, 65 coal. Uh, temperature is a balmy negative 20 degrees C. Oh, something happened. Uh, what are vice workers needed? There's so much to do and not enough hands to do. A quick way of addressing this problem is put our children to work. So, one way that you can manage your city survival shelter, a bunch of people huddling with blankets, is to pass laws. So, there's a variety of laws that you can do. 
Um, they have both benefits and uh, disadvantages. So the first law that's given to that we're uh, given is child labor. There's basically three different types of close this for a bit. Uh, there's basically three different types of Pause this for a quick second. So, as I was saying, there's basically three different types of people you can have. Workers, which are basically adults who don't have any official high-end training. Engineers, which are adults who have official high-end training. And then there are children, who haven't grown into adults yet. So... Oh, here we are. Welcome So... This law for the adaptation branch gives, uh, they want to know if I wish to pass a law designating child labor, which allows, ch uh, child la ch well, which allows children to work safe jobs. So basically they haul things and basically do, th uh, there aren't enough hands to do all the work or allow children to be employed in a safe workspace like cookhouses or hothouses. So they'll basically work in areas that aren't deemed hazardous, like going out hunting or trying to shove your hands into spinning gears, those types of hazardous jobs. Uh, so as I said, there are benefits and disadvantages. Children can work in safe workplaces. Hope will fall slightly. Child workers can be injured in accidents. And every law branches out. So there's also child labor which allows children to work in all jobs, regardless of uh, risk to their general health. And then there's also, if we select, there's two options we can select. Instead of having the kids work, we can build child shelters, where the children will be safe if they stay in child shelters during the day. Uh, they won't cause any mischief. And it gives me the new building of child shelter, Hope arise, providing all children with a place in a child shelter gives a permanent hope bonus. Uh, you will have to build a child shelter. So that's 20 wood and 5 steel. Right now, I'm more interested in making certain everybody uh, you know, has a place to stay. So last time I played this, I went with child labor safe jobs. Just because I needed... There's, there's never enough... There's more jobs than there are people to do them, so I needed more pe more people to do the basic jobs. So I had the kids do safe jobs. Um, people complained, but every but it helped out. Um, one thing that I do know of is that if I go with child shelters, I can actually eventually have them trained at, the kids trained as apprentices. So rather than then rather than them taking the positions of unskilled labor they can I believe take the positions of the skilled labor basically the engineers or medics um so as I said for right now I'm more interested in building shelter than I am schools or anything else so I'm going to not pass any laws right now once I get tents set up yeah a thinly insulated shelter for 10 people to sleep in so it requires 10 wood, and I have 55. So let's get this started. So I have enough to build five tents. One, two, three, four, five. Right, and they're not being built because the people who build them are spare laborers, basically those people who aren't actually doing anything, who aren't assigned to any other job. So, since I don't believe I need steel right now, at least more steel right now, I'm going to take the five engineers working that steel pit off, and hopefully they'll start building tents. I should also point out that there's two different uh, metrics that are governed, that govern, um, the well-being of your settlement. Discontent and hope. Basically they are regularly mutual. I want to say they're mutually exclusive but basically discontent is how angry people are and hopeful is how much hope they have. 
I should also point out that while you can max out this content and uh, zero out hope, you can actually still maintain a settlement with 100% discontent as far as I know, but if you run out of hope, they throw you out. So of the two, maintaining a high hope is probably the more important. Ah, so as we can see, the engineers have started building tents. And we got four more wood. 40, ah, 40 more wood. So I have five tents right now, and I need eight, so... Six, seven, eight. There we go. So this is the generator. I need to get it on before everybody freezes to death. So I can put it to steam level one, which would heat up the surrounding ring. That's which is basically where all the tents are, which is why the tent I put all the tents here first thing. Um, so I need six coal to turn it on, and I have. But almost uh, 300. Night is coming. Put down your tools. Yeah, so night's beginning to fall. They set up one tent. So 10 people get to. Well, sleep not sitting around and night is falling so we should probably turn the generator on food the generator hums with reassuring warmth uh but we shouldn't take it for granted if the generator goes down the city dies be mindful of coal, re coal reserves now food there's no there'd be no city if we starve to that secure way to provide raw food for the cookhouse to prepare meals so now that we have the generator on. Or we need to secure a raw food supply. We need to build a hunter's hut or a hot house. Uh, and then we need to build a cookhouse to start preparing meals. So we don't have a hot house. Kind of wish we did, but we don't. Uh, so we do have. So we're going to have to go with hunter's huts. Now I could put the hunter's hut right here, but I need this space for more residences. I know what's coming. So, I believe two hunter huts should be enough. But, so, we'll put one there. Build a cookhouse next to it. And I don't have enough wood to build the second one. Now, that should be fine for now. Also, I need roads. That's why those were yellow. Oh, here we are, Build Street. So, not enough wood to build more streets. Well, we'll get on that. So, five tents are built. Means 50 people get some place to not freeze. Yes, I know we're out of wood. It's a work in progress. They're getting the cook place up and running. We've also got one more tent they have to finish. And they're almost on the hunter's hut. So here we are, hunters, uh, people from our convoy. With basic resources secured for now, we can try to rescue the people we left behind. Build a beacon, scout Frostland, and save as many survivors from our expedition as possible. We need a workshop to design plans for more advanced buildings. So now that everybody has a tent, this content is done, and we now have hope. Well, more hope. But we need people to do things. So let's have them stop gathering wood from here and start having them work and uh, 
Ah, oh, so we have two people sick now. It's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. So cold homes or workplaces cause people to get sick without proper care, they become gravely ill and might die. Sick can be treated in medical posts, but the gravely ill need an infirmary to be treated. If you build one, you can save their lives by signing one of two laws. And it's basically some laws. So if we go to health, we have a medical post. But I need 25 wood and I'm out of wood, so that's tomorrow's task. Doesn't look like it's going to get colder until sometime after day four. So hopefully by then, well, people at least don't get worse. So every building has an info panel. Uh, so the basic temperature, temperature is livable because the building is one uh, insulation. Uh, the temperature of the hunter's hut, because it has two insulations, listed as comfortable, which anybody in there at the time uh, prevents them from getting ill. Whereas with only with the livable condition, there's a very low risk of getting ill. That's not a building. Tents, well, currently the temperature is comfortable because the tents have one building insulation and they're inside the heat zone, which is the first ring around the generator. So, what are these guys doing? But these are the hunters, I believe, going off to, well, hunt. So, we have critical shortage. Number of sick is rising. We don't have enough materials to build a medical post. Perhaps a short burst of effort can help us gather the necessary resources. Alright, so we open the book of laws. So another law in addition to child labor that we can do is the emergency shift. Sometimes we have to concentrate on the task at hand, cost of everything else, or die. So if we sign this law, we gain the new ability to force workers in any facility to work for the next 24 hours. And using the emergency shift will raise discontent and discontent will rise slightly just by signing the law. You know what? I'm going to sign this law. So, there's one law that, uh, for regards to food, where we have soup, which we can cook uh, soup instead of full meals to feed more people the same amount of raw food. And, uh, and it gives the new recipe of soup in the cookhouse, um, hope will fall slightly, discontent will rise slowly, and eating soup will cause discontent. Or, we can do food additives, which uh, allow us to add sawdust to meals to make them more filling, although not exactly tasty or healthy, which uh, gives us the new recipe of sawdust meal. Um, hope will fall slightly, discontent will rise slightly, and some people eating sawdust meals will fall ill. So I did soup last time simply because I had more people than hunters could easily bring in and we needed more food. So I shall pass the soup law. So cookhouse will now provide two, five rations of food and two raw food. People don't like it, but I'm sure when it comes to either that or star starving, they're still going to be disgruntled. They are people out there. Because if we do regular meat, so we have standard meal blues, blues so we would get about so we had a hundred raw food. That's fifty units. Nice. Yeah, so we've gotten a hundred rations. So now we'll get a little bit more. Because each hunter's hut will take 24, usually take about 24 hours. Hunters have been away for eight, and they'll bring back 15 raw food per day. And at the old way, the old time, that would be 28 meals. Yeah, 14. Because it's twice the even number of raw food, and so they will bring back four. Uh, have enough to bring back 14 groupings. And that would make 28 meals. Which, when you have 80 people, is not enough. People aren't happy about soup, though. 
But there's only so much I can do. Alright, but we are going to need the medical post. Just still don't have enough wood. If we speed slightly. No, and three people are now sick. That's not good. And now we have 265 rations and one unit of raw food. So we have enough food for three days. You're welcome, people. And we now have enough to build a medical tent. Which I want to say is slightly... Let's pause this for a second. I was hoping we could find information about the medical tent. I want to say it's insulated, much like uh, the cookhouse. So I actually want to build it on the second ring. But it's going to get two units of colder, which means it's not going to be... Yeah, you know what. I'll put it on the first ring. It's better to be safe than it is to be sorry. Yeah, it does have one building, one unit of building installation. Sick need to be cared for. Besides, I'm assuming I can always move it later. Or at least build another one, wait for people to move out of that one, and then flatten it. So the hunters have returned. Alright, we need five engineers, and we now have five engineers. So three people are being treated. So we have two children and a worker. Uh, which I'm assuming have frostbite. Or at the very least, they're just cold. So they're discontent because of bad food. I get like a week's worth of food, I'll probably put it back. It must have changed something when I last played, because soup I was at. In the past, I could have re uh, recall, I thought that soup was twice as good as a standard meal. You basically got twice the amount of soup for the same amount of food. But if the cookhouse, if the soup only gets me one extra ration, five rations instead of four, it may not be that great of an idea long term. For now, however, I don't have much discontent, so I'll take it for now. Still need a workshop. So workshops are need 15 wood and 5 steel. I have it, and it is a heavily, heavily insulated building. I'll put that there. We're currently out of wood again. We can also introduce a new law. So, I took off the engineers uh, gathering wood because A, everybody else already had a job, and B, I know for a fact that the workshop, workshop requires engineers, so once they get done building, that's their new job. And it also has two units of insulation, so it should be the highest insulated building I have available. Ten wood for the beacon. Well, just to research the beacon, then I need 20 wood and 35 steel to actually build it. Okay then we're going to do. Oh yeah. Put you guys back on wood collection. In fact, I have three days worth of coal stockpile. How much coal does this thing use? So it burns 144 units of coal per day. And I believe we're gathering 348 units of coal per day. So for now, we are, we have a positive coal grouping, not grouping, a positive uh, coal supply. Or coal is coming in, then we're then going out. Now once these are exhausted, as is these two eventually, I believe, will be. Okay, so I have three more deposits, and before those deposits burn out, I'm going to need to get a coal mine.
which I could also build a thumper. It allows me to just basically make coal piles. Right, so beacon then thumper. I now have four patients in the medical post. And it's gonna get a lot worse before it gets better. Got two days worth of rations. Yeah, so I don't have enough people gathering resources. This is why in the other one I passed the child uh, labor safe jobs law. So that way children could gather stuff. But out here, temperature is chilly. It's a low risk of getting ill. Need more people were gathering wood. Take five people off of each coal pile. Dump them all here. What's this? People from our convoy, family torn apart. Uh, sir, a woman came forward after we built the workshop. She said that her husband and daughter didn't reach the city with the main group. Sir, they're still out there. She wants to join the first scout team we'll send out. She urges you to hurry. We're working on it. It's on the to-do list. There we are. We have enough wood to build the beacon. So the beacon allows us to send scouts to search the wilderness for goods and survivors to bring them to our city. Let's also spot incoming groups of people. Again. It's going to be done in about seven hours. Alright, so even though I have less people gathering coal, we're still gathering 288 per day and we're still burning 144 per day. So, still a net positive. Coal is increasing. About four days of coal and still about three days worth of food. Uh, currently 18 wood and 8 steel. So once I get about 25 wood, I'm probably going to pull the workers off wood and have them start gathering metal. I'm going to need more metal to build the beacon. So the weather changes. Temperature in the city constantly changes. Pay close attention to the forecast for the next 5 days. It's shown uh, around temperature screen. The monitoring case directs temperature change. The mouse over for details. When it gets cold outside, temperature side building drop as well. See if the amount of protection they offer for the cold. See the factors affect the temperature in the building or the mouse over thermometer icon in the panel. Yeah, so as I said, day three is ending, middle of day four, right, right as day four begins, it's going to drop by 20 degrees. So instead of it being negative 20, it's going to be negative 40 for, looks like, about a day when the temperature rises to negative 30. Cause ain't that fun. So they should manage to get the research done tomorrow. Discontent is increasing. And it is now negative 40 degrees C. Temperature requires many buildings such as the Cookhouse and Medical Post must be at least chilly or warmer inside to function. Place them in the heat zone around the generator steam up. So stop working when it gets cold. You should also research and turn on heaters. So because it is now cold, it's no longer operable because it's too cold to work. I guess it's a good thing to put this in the heat zone. One person is currently being treated and we currently are, well, working on that. We have enough wood for the beacon, as I said. Let me take 10 people off wood and have them start gathering metal. So we also have uh, extreme circumstance. The generator can put into oil drive. This increase the heat of the device while also put the generator in stress. Keep an eye on the stress gauge. Once it reaches 100, the generator will explode. So it's one way to get people hot. To keep the, oh, beacons researched. Alright, so next thing we want to research is, should put in heaters. Alright, so we now research the beacon, we should need, we should build it next. Except we don't have the metal. <clears throat> and they're researching heaters, so hopefully, once that's done, the cookhouse will be able to function. Slightly. In this scenario, I will take slightly. 
and a coal pile has now been depleted. Come on. There we are. So we'll get on that. And five will get me gathering metal. And that coal pile is now depleted. So where's the next coal pile? It's wood. And there we are. So it's at 93% efficiency because one person is in treatment for it being cold. Mild, mild frostbite. Our citizen became gravely ill. Yeah. Change the cold frostbite. Whenever people become gravely ill to the frostbite, this will keep happening if uh, if people have to work in such cold. Okay. So we should pass a law. So in this regards, we have two options: radical treatment which means we'll try everything to cure the gravy wheel from invasive surgery to amputations. Uh, the gravy wheel will be treated in medical posts, hope will rise slightly. There is a 30% chance the gravy wheel will be treated in the medical posts will be left as amputees. Discontent will rise slightly. Or we have sustained life, where we can't cure the gravy wheel, at least keep them alive. We won't risk dangerous amputations with radical treatment. Uh, and the gravely ill kept alive but untreated in medical posts. Hope will rise slightly, discontent will rise slightly. Gravely will not be treated and remain a burden. Gravely will take up beds in medical posts. Let's sustain life. Because if we chop off people's Yes, I know we need an infirmary. It's on the to-do list. Everything is on the to-do Actually, what do we need for an infirmary? infirmary, so it's actually a tier 2. So I would need 50 wood for drawing boards to get the tier 1. Probably, I think, 50 more to get to the tier 2. So that's not going to happen for quite some time. But when it does... Alright, that's still an opera. This is still working on heaters. Oh, look at that. We have enough to build a beacon. Construction. There he is. Oh, I misread that. We don't have enough to build a beacon. We need two more steel to build a beacon. Ah, oh, we have researched heaters. It's here to heat workplaces during work hours. So, turn that on and it can start functioning. So, the next thing we should research. Beacon, we have heaters, steam hub will probably help. Right now, I actually want to do hunter's gear. Because food is, uh, after coal, food is probably the most important resource. And if soup is going to make people unhappy, then I'm going to need. If I can't, and as I keep telling well, people, if you can't get quality, then you should go for quantity. And if soup is going to make people unhappy, then I'm going to need more raw food to make standard meals. Alright, build the beacon. Where am I going to put the beacon? Put the beacon next to the work uh, shop. Pull the engineers off wood duty so that way they can build the beacon. I'll move some of the steel because I believe because uh, I need wood for research, so I'm going to need more wood than I am going to need steel. So 
we'll say ten people, uh, ten workers off steel the steel wreckage and have them break apart wooden crates. So we're still gathering 168 units of coal per day, and we have 154. We're consuming 154 units of coal per day. So we're still get a net positive, so we have about four days worth of coal. And the beacon is built. No longer lost and blind. From now on, our people will be able to survey the icy barrens that surround us, frost and it. Hot air balloon deploys. Observatory and the Lost Expedition. So, some scouts to learn about, more about this place. There's times we can see people moving about, they must be lost members of our expedition. Alright, so we will need to create a new scout team, have five citizens, at least five citizens must be available, and there's not enough wood. How much wood do I need? Oh, 40 units of wood. I have 18. Not getting ready to go. Alright, so ready to search. People cheer as giant observation balloon soars above the city. It's a real feat. Everyone feels proud of the work they've done to make it happen. Volunteers lined up, eager to go looking for a lost people in Frostland. One that came forward uh, earlier is among them. Cool. Back on wood detail. Very cold here, high risk of getting ill, low risk of becoming gravely ill. But no one actually works inside the beacon. I probably actually should have moved it further out, but well, yeah. One person is sick, and I no longer have space in the medical tent to, well, keep them. I mean, the tent has enough space for five people. And there's now five people in there. Oh, there's a heater. So turning that on means that I'm not burning through more coal than I'm getting in. So about three days I'll run out of coal. Got four people sick in addition to patients. Alright, so in addition, so in laws branch off, so we actually have, since we sign sustain life, we have a branch for the care house, Levy ill and amputees to be cared for at low cost in special homes. Uh, and we'll be care home, Gravy will be kept alive in care house, no longer burn our medical posts. Business at care houses need half as much, hope will rise slightly, and I have to build a care house. I could also sign in either extra rations for the ill, we feed sick people extra rations to help with recovery. Uh, use extra rations and medical facilities to get recovery. No ill side effects. We also have extra crowding. Uh, <clears throat> your medical, medical facility should be fully utilized. We have to put patients on the floor. Uh, and then we have capacity of medical facilities is doubled. The extra capacity causes discontent and discontent will rise slightly. I was coming over here to actually put in overcrowding, but, well, I can't sign a new law right now. Anyway. It's cold everywhere. Alright, and they're out of wood crates, so guess where they're going next? A oh, frostbite, a citizen has become gravely ill. I now have 10 sick, 3 gravely, and 
I have enough to build the uh, scout team, but I need five people. Now I have five people. And Hunter's gear has been researched. Goody. So, scout team. Go to the Lost Expedition. Scouts reached. It'll take 10 hours and 41 minutes to get there. And at that this point, I feel the need to call it a day. So, we'll see what happens, hopefully next time. Do I have enough? I do not have enough spare wood. Alright. Find out what happens next time, hopefully. And, uh... Everyone stay safe from the current plague that's ravaging the real world. And everyone have a good day.